to today. Um, thank you for bearing with us with the weather. Um, I know we're going to be cozy under here in this tent for a while, but hopefully the weather will hold out. Um, that's a little event without some rain, right? So to kick everything off, I'll just start by saying not too long ago, Fremont was known mostly for its suburban roots, but our city's thriving economy and economic growth in general put us in just the right position to reshape our scene and bring in a sustainable urban dimension. Fast forward to today and we have dynamic projects underway, transit-oriented development, a jobs-focused innovation district, and the makings of a thriving downtown, just to name a few things. Our city's vision has actually turned into our reality. So Fremont's 60th anniversary is an enormous milestone. That's why we wanted to do something that would be truly memorable for our entire community and would commemorate this impressive time in our city's history. Thank you for being a part of that today. So in addition to our communities gathering today, Mayor Bill Harrison and the Fremont City Council wanted to do something special that would not only pay tribute to Fremont's past, but would serve as a symbol of where we see Fremont heading in the future. This time capsule ceremony will represent just that. The time capsule will be installed next to our city's, the site of our city's future civic center, which is right behind us. Mayor Harrison and other city officials chose this spot because we believe the downtown area, and more specifically the Civic Center, will really serve as a critical space for the Fremont community. Now, without further ado, I'd like to hand things off to Mayor Harrison to share his personal vision for the 60th anniversary <coughs> time capsule. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jessica, and good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Well, you know, they say it's good luck on your wedding day when it's rained, so it has to be good luck if it rains on your 60th anniversary of a city municipality, right? It has to be that way, so that's very good. You know, before we get started formally, uh, I do want to thank some people out here. Uh, this was definitely a team effort, and uh, when we came up with this idea, you know, the, the city, art, city staff already, already has a lot to do, and we added a lot to, a lot, a lot to do with this celebration as we start to celebrate the, all throughout the year here. So please help me give a big round of applause to our community service department, our street maintenance, public work, and the Fremont Police Department. They really did a lot to get this together. And I want to give a special shout out to Cheryl Golden, Jessica Von Bork, and Anna Giles. I'm going to make them stand up and wave because they did an awesome job doing this and getting us all here together. As Jessica touched upon, it's really astonishing that the city of Fremont was founded just 60 years ago, when five individual townships, Centerville, Niles, Warm Springs, Irvington, and Mission San Jose, came together to form the city. For years, Fremont was overwhelmed by our larger neighbors, San Jose, San Francisco, and Oakland. But we've continued to up our game and make our name for ourselves. We're no longer known as the end of the BART line, and we're no longer the Bay Area's best kept secret. What started out as a rural landscape of farms, ranches, and towns, and a stop along the way from people going to San Francisco to Oakland has evolved to an impressive hub of advanced manufacturing and other innovative companies. What started out as a place known for explorers, settlers, suburbia, is now known for engineers, innovators, visionaries, and a place where all are welcome. Our city is on our way to becoming a strategically urban ecosystem complete with excellent schools, unique community, programs, an innovation district, and a future downtown that we're building from scratch. I know our founding fathers would be proud to see how much Fremont has flourished since its inauguration. Being born and raised in Fremont, I know where Fremont stood 40 years ago. We had no downtown. There weren't any big companies that called us home. But since then, I've had a firsthand experience to see what Fremont has progressed to since its incorporation in 1956. It's a community we can all be proud of. 
A city that just focuses on its past has no future, and a city that doesn't evolve will die. The area that once provided the region the staples of life, like salt, olives, and grapes, has become the area that once produced silent films that entertained the world. That became the city that provided the workers that built Silicon Valley. That became the city that became the birthplace of the Mac, silicon chips and wafers, and the first place that Japanese and American automakers stood side by side to produce cutting edge technology of that time. That has become the city that is home to the world's most advanced automaker, home to bioscience, home to solar companies that are saving the planet, and home to healthcare companies that are improving our lives. When I think about how our city in the future, what the city holds for our future, I often think of my own two sons. I know they, that we will build a Fremont that will be a place that is desirable for our children as they grow up, to live, to work, to play, and to be part of the community. We will continue to create a place where all our children will have a place to live and work and to shop and play. We're developing an innovation district that will power our use for years to come, and we'll have a downtown that will serve as a social heartbeat for our Fremont community. Since this time capsule will be opened by our current youth and Fremont residents in the year 2056, I thought it was appropriate that the city partner with the Youth Advisory Commission, who we're going to hear from a little later, and the Fremont Unified School District to choose items that would be included. You can see the contents of the former time capsule behind there, make sure you see that today. And we have a nice placard that we're going to put above where this time capsule is going to be placed so we no one forgets where we buried this one. <laughs> our goal this time was to collect items that would tell a story about our vibrant community that exists today. We've assembled a vast array of items ranging from lap a laptop with important city documents that is backed up and a photo to our uh, photos of beautiful collections of students and essays that represent Fremont means to the youth and how they think Fremont will look in 40 years. When our future residents open this time capsule, I hope that Fremont will have grown into an even more dynamic urban city centered on transit-oriented development. At the local level, I know Fremont will continually evolve into a closer-knit community with the addition of our new downtown and civic center. I want to thank you all very much for coming today. And now it's my pleasure to bring up to the podium a uh, former mayor, former council member, former planning commissioner, former everything in the city of Fremont. We actually wanted to find out if there's a way we could shrink him down, preserve him, and put him in the time capsule. So 40 years he could come out and tell everyone what happened, what was there, because he's kind of the unofficial historian of the city of Fremont. Uh, I confirmed with him, he's the longest serving member on the Fremont City Council. He pointed out proudly that no one that served before him is alive today. <laughs> so please bring to the stage former Mayor Gus Morrison. When Bill went to his first U.S. Conference of Mayors meeting and he introduced himself as the Mayor of Fremont, one of the staff members who has a unique tie to Fremont said, you know, to be mayor of Fremont, you must be this high, so. <laughs> this is a great place. And it's a great place because 60 years ago, a small group of people, 22,500 people lived here, and Hayward was attempting to incorporate all the way to the county line. And they made a mistake, and it got in a newspaper. And then it caused a reaction that created these three cities, Fremont being one. And I'd have to correct Bill, there were six small towns that incorporated <clears throat> Everyone forgets Alviso was a hamlet down here to the, to the north, not the Alviso over there. Uh, north Centerville, there was Alviso School in the Alviso District. Alviso did not have a post office, so it didn't count. <clears throat> so 60 years ago, like a, a jigsaw puzzle, uh, the founders set the outside boundary, the easy part. We knew the boundaries north, south, east, and west. And the hard part was putting the middle pieces together, the big ones, the small ones, the different colored ones, all the ones that fit exactly right. So they adopted the first general plan in 1959 and set a goal. Uh, Warren Bennis, a uh, professor, wrote a book called Leaders, 
which he defined leadership as being setting a goal and finding a way to reach that goal. So that goal was a general plan, and they set off on a plan to build this city as it is. And believe it or not, the first general plan called for a population in Fremont in 1990, 27 years ago, to be 390,000 people. And we built all the infrastructure, or they, pardon me, not me yet, they built the infrastructure to accommodate that. The streets are wide, uh, the, the sewer system, all the stuff you need to build a city is built for a larger population than we have. Now think how bad it would be if we had that number of population. Uh, so they built it, and there are, before I served, I was the 21st member of the city council, and that was 1978. And those people who came before me set the plan, followed the goal. Every election was a fight over the general plan, and the general plan almost always won. And people like Don Dillon, Jeff Steele, Gene Rhodes, those three had the continuity. They served 13, 16 years, and they tied everything together. It was Rhodes on one side and Dillon on the other side, and Jeff Steele making all the decisions. Uh, and you'll notice we don't have a golf course, but we have lots of tennis courts. Well, Jeff Steele played tennis. And when he retired from council and retired from work, he took up golf, and he cursed every time he had to go out of town to play golf that he'd play golf earlier. Uh, we, had a, we had a tumultuous time in this city in the beginning. There were elections. Like one year, there were five elections. Uh, not for people, we would put measures on it out. People voted to incorporate the city, but they didn't want to pay for anything. Uh, they turned down parks, they turned down fire stations, they turned down uh, city hall, uh, and then the council would find ways around people turning things down and built this city. Uh, it was an exciting time. Uh, we had uh, pretty straight, we had a couple of recalls over the years, uh, but not very many. And the group of people who served, I don't care who they were, when they were, they served pretty much honorably, a uh, couple of, you know. Uh, but, but they served with dignity. And uh, we had a, a staff member go off to be an assistant city manager somewhere else. And I said to her, no matter where you go, you'll never find a better city council than the Fremont City Council, even in its worst days. And so a couple years go by, and there's a funeral of a staff member, and I bumped into her, and the first thing she said to me was, not even hello, she said, you were right. So this is a place where the leaders lead. Uh, they have a goal. They want to build this city, and they want to build it. What the first people wanted was a place for people to raise families. Uh, there used to be a bookstore in Berkeley called a clean, well-lighted place for books. I describe Fremont as a clean, safe, well-lighted place for kids. Uh, we came here, I came here for $100 down, GI, uh, no closing costs. And I talked to many people who came for the same reason. We brought our families here, we raised our families, and then suddenly, about 25 years ago or so, people started coming from all over the world all over the world to bring their kids here for a better life and for a better future. So today, we are one of the most unique cities in the world. I would, I would compare us to places like Hong Kong and London, not as big, of course, but the same tapestry, the same colors, the same vibra vibra vibrancy, uh, the same things you see of different people speaking different languages all fitting together in a mosaic, a tapestry, a complete jigsaw puzzle. We're getting there. We're going to be great when it's all done. We're great now. We're going to be a special place when it's all done. It's still a great place to raise kids, and it's a great place to grow and to grow old like me. Thank you for inviting me. Anyway, um, what I would really, what I have the honor of doing is introducing our Youth Advisory Committee Subcommittee Chair, who put so much heart and soul into assimilating all of the items that 
um, we are placing, most of the items that we are placing in the time capsule today. Uh, I'd like to personally thank Alvaro and Katie. I know they're in the audience today. They are our staff liaison to, they're, they're in the back. Um, they are our staff liaison to our youth advisory committee and they just do such an amazing job with these kids. I'm so impressed with their intelligence, their drive, their tenacity. I know I certainly didn't have that skill set when I was in high school um, or that ambition and I'm just continually impressed with um, what they provide for our community and how they continue to push us to be better at what we do. So I feel very uh, fortunate to have had a chance to work with them in pulling some of this stuff together. So without further ado, because that was a long introduction, I'd like to introduce Sonia Sakar, who is the subcommittee chair for the Youth Advisory Commission. Hi everyone. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the city for the opportunity to speak today on behalf of the Time Capsule Subcommittee. I'm Sonia Sakar, and I'm currently a senior at Irvington High School. I'm the chair of the Time Capsule Subcommittee that organized the Time Capsule alongside the mayor's authors. The subcommittee essentially is made up of five youth commissioners, a subgroup from the original 13. The Youth Advisory Commission itself works towards bridging the gap between youth and government. As commissioners, we represent the 15,000 youth of Fremont. We convey issues that are pertinent to young people, to local government officials, and help these officials keep these issues to, in perspective when formulating new policies. We also lead recreational activities to engage the youth in leadership, such as a junior high leadership conference, and commemorate the talented youth that make up our city in our Fremont Scat Talent Show. Home to almost every different culture of the world, Fremont cultures its citizens to become the unique people of the globe. Today I walk around the streets of Fremont and see unity and diversity. Fremont will continue to be at the forefront of diverse communities, especially with the new downtown Fremont. This year, in the words of the iconic Steve Jobs, to truly memorialize the present, the city launched a huge initiative to build a time capsule. The time capsule subcommittee worked to organize a capsule that encapsulates the essence of everything that makes Fremont the wonderful city it is today. With an empty capsule and the freedom to truly decide what belongs in it, that would represent the youth, we asked Fremont teens through an online survey what they would like to see in the capsule. A vital component that kept re-emerging was the variations of the technology that could be included. We got results from ranging from SAT Blue Book to an iPhone that were brought to the table. This was no surprise to the different technologies as the commissioners of Fremont expected Silicon Valley, the city of Fremont and Silicon Valley to have these different technologies that today defines youth in various ways. Thus, we included a Dell laptop along with the user guide in the capsule with the hope that Fremont, futuristic Fremont citizens will be able to determine that it is, it, is, it is indeed a technology instead of an ancient black object. Reaching out to Fremont schools, we included items representing different schools and their unique talents, such as American High School's Glee Club, We Love Fremont Song. Finally, we conducted an art and essay competition to celebrate the infamous youth talent of Fremont. Through this competition, we received artwork and essays from a talented group of youth, ranging all the way from kindergartners to high school seniors. Their artwork was also com commemorated and placed in the time capsule. Through this initiative, I have learned invaluable skills, but none as important as the insight into what a truly extraordinary city Fremont is and a, and a home that I'm proud to say I'm from. I would like to acknowledge the other commissioners that worked on this time capsule. Bavia Milati from American High School, Sanjana Gondala from Mission San Jose High School, Shrey Kapoor from San Francis High School, and Pavitra Nagarajan from American High School, as well as Elena Kwok, Jessica Van Voort, Anna Guelas, and Alvaro Zambrano from the City Manager's Office that made this time capsule possible. Thank you.